Jeremy Cook here, and today I'll be showing how to control a Raspberry Pi's fan based on temperature. You can see here it's controlling a ice tower cooling fan based on a transistor input, which is just the middle base pin that you plug in and it turns on. And this one has a really nice LED light that tells you when it's on and off. Looks, looks really awesome. I'll be showing you how to do this with a breadboard with just soldered together components and also show how I made a PCB to do the same thing. Here you've got the positive wire for the, the motor that just goes all the way through, and then two goes through a 500 ohm resistor to the base to turn it on. Looks pretty good there. And if you want to see this in a breadboard, there it is. There's a little fan for the pie and the yellow is the base. Black is the, the collector and the emitter. And the add on a 500 ohm resistor. And then there's the 2N2222 transistor. It's hooked up to a power supply and when the yellow line is hooked in, the transistor activates and lets electricity flow through the ground and to the ground. This is a really basic transistor setup. Basically, it's just the transistor situated after the, the load to allow current to flow out. Here's the diode. If you put that on, the exact same thing happens. But when it stops, if there's some sort of induced current, it lets that dissipate. So yeah, looking pretty good there. And if you put it on backwards, it actually doesn't work. It actually doesn't go on. So yeah, go in there and if you put it on backwards, it stops it. I didn't leave it on for very long there because, well, it heats up after a while. So you can just use your imagination. So here we got the 2N222 transistor with the leads bent up so it makes nice, nice way to hold them while they're soldered on. Got the base emitter and the collector. Base, of course, has the resistor, so it doesn't get too much current flowing through there. The 2N2222 transistor is a, a logic-style transistor, so even though I'm activating it with a higher voltage here, it can actually be activated with the Pi's 3.3 volts or an Arduino's 5 volts or whatever, or an ESP32 or whatever you have. So after testing that out, bent the, bent the leads and put some heat shrink on. Heat shrunk that, heat shrink, however you say that. Heat, heat shrink it and it's still working. I just want to make sure I tested it all the way through because when I tried it the first time, something happened between when I hooked it up and when it when it got heat, heat shrunk. Final layer of yellow heat shrink to make sure everything's good. And when you connect the base, it fires up just as it should. We can go with the power supply, but let's see how it works with a Raspberry Pi. Got to hook all the leads up to a, some female connectors, of course. Hook it up to a base emitter and collector, and the base is hooked up to pin three, I believe. And with that done, we'll log on on the terminal via PuTTY. And we and once we hit the three OP for output, and then DH for digital high and DL for digital low. So DH, digital high, turns on, and then digital low turns it off, just as it should. Of course, this is just a fancy remote control at this point. What you really want to see is how to turn this fan off based on temperature. So what I'll do here is I'll, I'll write a little bash script, uh, tempfan-.sh. You could name it whatever you want as long as it's, it runs. And you've got the on temp at 45 here. You can set it to whatever you want, but that's decent temperature, I guess. So when it's greater than that, based on the VCG and CMD command, it looks at the processor temperature with that. If it's greater than that, then it turns the fan on. So if temp zero greater than GT on temp, then turn it on, um, write three one. And then if it's off, write three zero. So that'll work once, but what you really want to do is run all the time. So it'll run, turn on and off based on the temperature. So looking at that, you got your temp dash fan dot SH, and you can do a fancy command called Crone tab minus E or dash dash E. Basically, this is setting up your, your system so it'll run a task over and over. And what I did here is I put star 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 all stars here dot slash temp fan dot sh, which means it'll run it every minute of every hour of every day. So once a minute, it'll check the temperature, turn it on or off. There may be some better ways to do this that'll check it faster or more often, but I found this to be the simplest way I found by far. So. I think it'll work pretty well and yeah, I'm sure you can improve on it if you like. 
So from there, I mean, you know, 90% of you will probably just want to solder it together and put the heat shrink around it, which I think will be a good way to do it. But I also made a PCV. In fact, I made this PCV before I even tried out this technique. And basically, it just does the same thing as you saw before, a, a transistor switch. Designed everything on KiCad, of course. And you've got your 2N2222 transistor port there. Resistor was thinking it'd be 1K to begin with, but I didn't have a lot of those left over, so it became 500. And your diode, so the current can dissipate if needed. All in all, that diode's kind of optional, as you'll see in a minute. Connect all the traces. Looks, looks pretty good. And let's trace this all around, trace the outside of it. Make sure everything's good. Let's see how it looks in 3D. Yeah, it looks okay, but all of my designs are supposed to look like a spaceship, of course, and maybe I could save a little space. This this board was like like a little under two dollars on Osh Park for six of them, so you know, an hour's worth of my time or whatever, thirty minutes to save a quarter, maybe. Not not the greatest value proposition in the world, but it's great practice, and I enjoyed enjoyed uh, doing it. And of course. It's not just all about the money. Part of it is you want this to be very, very small and look good in your design, of course. So it looks good there, but got to put a little chamfer on the edges. Looks even better. Of course, we want to go ahead and connect up the, the ground plane on the top and the bottom. Probably not necessary for this design, but still good practice. And if we're going to do it, why not? Why not do it right? So look good. And a couple weeks later, I got these back and Wow, these boards are really tiny. And I was thinking maybe they're like PCBs for ants, as, as Derek Zoolander might have said at one one time. Nonetheless, smaller is better in this case. And I even even put the uh, the diode vertically as well as the resistor it was designed for that, so it could be a little little slimmer. Thanks, uh, thanks to Newell for the tip on that some time ago. Really happy with the close shots I'm able to get on this. I got a new. Canon RS, Canon, a new Sony A series camera. So I'm able to get a little bit closer in on it. Hopefully, um, my videos will be even better in the future as I get used to this new hardware. So, with all that soldering done, yeah, it looks, looks pretty good. So, let's see if it works on the, on the fan as everything else. Yeah, spoiler, it, it does because. I've already done it. I've, I've watched this video a few times before. So connect this up, connect the positive and negative as needed, and then hook it up to the, to the base. And it lets electrons flow just as it should in a perfect world. Looking, looking good. So let's get a, go ahead and get a shot of that in action. Again, as in the beginning, I was quite pleased with how this shot came out. The, the, the device here is just hooked up to a, a temperature that's a little bit too low, so it just stays on all the time, but it's, it's great for demos. And as you can see here, when I disconnect the middle wire, which is the base, it's, it's as if the Pi has told it to turn off, then I can reconnect it. Again, one of my clumsy fingers can push it back in. Look at that. Got it on the first try, or, or so my edits would have you believe. So my Pi will keep keep nice and cool even in the hot Florida garage in my that in my house. And as you can see here, there's actually the Pi high quality camera on the left, just facing my 3D printer. So hopefully this means that my time lapses, my printer time lapses will get even better in the future. Cause I gotta be honest, they've been they've been bad at times. They it could have been better. So if you want to check back or subscribe, you get that to look forward to. And if you want to get this PCB, I'll, I'll go ahead and put some information on the in the description, and maybe I'll put it for sale on Tindy. Hopefully, there'll be some interest. So, thanks so much for watching. Hope uh, hope you enjoyed it, and I'll I'll talk to you next time. This is Jeremy S. Cook, signing off.